All right, guys. First day of crabbing for me. If you're out at the opener, which happened a couple days ago, man, it was super rough. Way too rough to handle um, the zodiac and and uh, yeah, it would have been treacherous to get this marshmallow out there in the water. So we waited for um, a few days, and the tide definitely changed in our favor. The next couple days are supposed to be really calm out here. And by calm, I'm talking about you know two to three foot swells, um, not too much tide change, uh, not a lot of wind. So in my opinion, great conditions for crabbing. So if you've ever crabbed off a kayak, you know it's a lot of work. So. I'm hoping that this whole setup, you know, the Zodiac, the, the motor, it gets me to the grounds faster and gets me on crabs faster. And uh, who doesn't want that? This is the cage um, that Miguel hooked me up with from this company called uh, CCP. I think they're out of uh, Oregon. And um, awesome, awesome opportunity to um, do some damage. So, you know, the bait I have in here, I think this is sturgeon. Uh, we'll see if it works. And I'm gonna punch it up a little bit with, um, some canned cat food. I'm not going to even really open it. I'm just popping the top just a little bit to throw out scent and help my cause. And uh, I'm going to put it in the bait cage. Got our first bait box in there. Going to snap it shut just like that. And we've got our little buoy marker for our harness whenever you're running crab pots absolutely need a harness and uh, you need a harness to ensure that the uh, crab uh, cage you know falls down and sits nice and flat on the bottom so i'm going to take this throw it in the water and hopefully we'll catch something and look at this because i'm on the zodiac i have a nice platform to stand up and take care of business so we're going to toss this in first crab pot of the season long awaited season going in All right, mark that spot. Uh, it's highly advised that you use um, lead core line, not poly, because poly rope uh, floats at the surface and tangles everyone's prop. It's kind of a dick move, frankly. So if you can, please use lead core rope. It sinks straight down and ensures that your line doesn't tangle with anyone's props. So that was pot number one. Let's go find a spot for pot number two. All right, this is halibut. It's like old halibut. I think it's like a two-year-old carcass. I prefer fresh, uh, but we'll see if my little, you know, crab food injection flavor addition helps, you know, catch this crab. So, sending it in pot number three. Let's go, baby. Mark that one. One more pot to drop. Let's go. One thing you'll notice that I do, that maybe some people don't do, is I don't have weight in the trap, and that's because today doesn't really require weight. I don't like to go out on days, nor do I think I have a vessel strong enough to go out on days where it's so rough that I need weight in the cage. So, you know, one less thing for me to worry about and that much less weight to have to haul up the pulley. But what I do weight are the doors. Now, hopefully you can see this, but I use coiled lead that you can pick up at Big Five Dicks online. And uh, I coil, I don't know, like an eight inch length around the uh, door. And what this does is it keeps the crabs from crawling out should the current be strong enough down there to have the doors flailing open like that. We don't want that. We want the doors to stay closed. We want any crab we catch to stay ours. So that's why I weight the doors but not the pots. And uh, we'll see if it makes a difference with these three serve perch going down. All right, got the harness teed up. And one thing I like to do is invest in stainless steel wherever I can because I, I even with like galvanized stuff, cheap stuff on Amazon, man, it has a tendency to rust like immediately. So 
where possible. I like to use galvanized or stainless steel for my hardware and uh, I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in some really nice stainless steel uh, carabiner clips. Um, should last a lot longer than the ones I had before. All right, one thing I forgot to mention is my buddy actually came out here Bought a Zodiac just like this one using my discount code Ish with Fish. Got him 10% off his 12 footer. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that he left his pots out here and he said, Hey, I'm not going to be able to get out here till Wednesday. Turns out, uh, why don't you go and pull them up and whatever crab are in there you can keep? So I get to maybe get some crab on my way back in. So super excited. Uh, so let's see if pot number one of my buddies actually has anything. All right, it's my first time using my crab puller. We'll see how it works compared to just pulling it up by hand. Okay. Okay. It's working. It's working. All right. First pot. Let's see if he caught me any dungies. Oh, what the heck? Whoa, some big rock crab. All right. Yeah, there's a big dungeness in there. We'll take him. Oh, look at that. He's got some salmon head. He's got uh, all kinds of stuff in there. Nice. Man, you know, this pot came up kind of weird. I didn't like the way it came up at all. So, boom. First crab of the season. Compliments of my friend. Thanks, dude. That's a keeper for sure. We'll measure it in a second. All right, this is how you properly hang a pot. Well, four corners all the way around straight down I like this pot puller definitely works even with the arm extension not too flimsy for the pots that I'm pulling up and again I don't have a lot of weight in there the only weight that I'm gonna feel coming up are crabs of course we got to measure in California you can take you know during the open Dungeons crab season you can take a uh, you can take males and females they just got to be a minimum five and three quarters from lateral spine to lateral spine so got a crab gauge like this and I recommend that you guys get metal ones I've gone through plastic ones and the tabs always break and if you're um, in an area where they're checking your licenses your crab gear um, they're gonna want to make sure that your crab gauge is intact and you can get a ticket if it isn't um, so I blown through plastic ones I found a really uh, nice one on uh, Amazon um, a red one and uh, an aluminum one like this one they're all aluminum um, and I definitely recommend that you guys go metal instead of plastic Ooh, this guy's feisty dang <laughs> Woo! six and over a quarter almost six and a half nice healthy whale that we're gonna have for dinner tonight oh yeah this makes life a lot easier I don't have to put my back into it as much. Just using my arms and my body weight a little bit to pull these pots up. So this is about 55 feet of water again. I dropped all mine a lot shallower. So we'll see if there's anything in these three. All right, let's see. Ugh. Whoa, big nothing. Wow, okay. Did not expect nothing. Huh. Wow. Big fat zero. All right, he left me two. Actually, yes, he left me three. So I think the third one's right over there, but it's not that far away. I would be very surprised if there was a keeper in there, considering that that one was a big fat skunk. Big fat zero. A lot of rope. Dang. Nothing. Big rock crab. Yep. These spots suck. <laughs> oh, that's not good for me because I'm not that much farther away from he is. I dropped three pots far away from the jetty. The one closest to the jetty on my friend's line caught something. Caught a dungeness. So I'm kind of nervous that the ones that I drop deep aren't going to produce. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. 
All right, so here's where the story takes a little bit of a turn. While I was out there, my motor was experiencing a little hesitation. It was riding fine, it was idling fine, and all of a sudden the RPM would drop really low. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but I think I had moisture in my line. Uh, my friend said that if you um, have your gas tanks stored outside, there's this, you know, and there's big swings in temperature, um, condensation can form on the inside of the tank, and uh, that moisture trickles down into the gas, and that gas is uh, kind of ruined and tainted by uh, the water that, you know, is settling in the gas. And unless you treat it with a stable and sea foam, then uh, these two strokes, which can be a little finicky, um, they can choke out and they can hesitate and uh, you're stuck in the water. And that's what happened. As I came back into the dock, uh, my motor started bogging down and I made the mistake of messing around with the throttle knob. And uh, this two stroke just said, no loss. And uh, he quit on me and I couldn't start it up. I think I flooded the carb at that point. Lucky for me, a father-son duo happened to be cruising by. They towed me back to the dock. I uh, limped home with the Zodiac um, completely flushed the lines, uh, dumped my uh, tank, and uh, put new fuel in it, and uh, treated it with uh, stable and sea foam, and fired it back up, and it's been idling great ever since. But how did I get my pots? Well, same day, my friend that was out there, Danny, aka the YouTuber Uber, happened to be out there too, and he offered to pick me up at the dock and uh, take me back to my pots so I could recover not only my lost gear, but the potential for more crabs, and this is what happened. Oh, that looks good. I think that's it. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, my first trap pull of the season. Is this supposed to be really windy tomorrow? Dang, nothing. Whew. Nothing. Wow, that's pretty sad. Ah, oh, jeez, nothing. Rock wow. Thank you. <clears throat> or maybe this is the honey hole. There we go. Some color. Oh yeah, big one. Nice. Woohoo! That one's a keeper. Hell yeah. This is the first, my first dungeon in my trap this season. Woo! Six and a half. Nice. First one in the bucket. Thanks to this guy. Got it. Hey, this one feels good. This one's heavier than the last one. Okay, maybe not that heavy. Huh? There's some stuff, but it doesn't look like the colors I want. Dang, there must be like... Rock all rock crab. Well, that's the one with your... That's the one with the GoPro, hopefully. You have a GoPro still. Yeah. One, two, three, that's all I got. But uh, you know what? With it came a lot of lessons learned. Uh, the biggest lesson of the day is treat your fuel. If you're gonna have an engine powering your entire day, this is the heartbeat of the entire operation. You definitely gotta respect it. So I didn't realize that moisture can build up inside of a tank if it's stored outside where there's a lot of temperature swings and uh, that moisture can compromise your fuel in the form of condensation. So to offset it, you definitely gotta use some uh, additives. So you're gonna throw in the stable to offset any moisture, help things run fine, and uh, some sea foam to help keep uh, your your engine clean and your carb clean. This is a 15 horse Mercury two stroke. And uh, for anyone that's you know familiar with older carbs, they can be finicky, those jets can gum up. So uh, you need something to help keep things lubricated, keep things clean and help offset uh, any problems. So three, better than none. You know, when I started crabbing, I started snaring. One crab was a victory. I progressed to kayaking. Three was a victory. Now that I have a vessel, man, you know, I'm kind of raising the bar and anything less than a limit, I'm kind of, you know, a little sorely disappointed so that's crabbing you know you, you live and you learn and hopefully next time i spend more time on the water actually catching crab than sitting in a harbor waiting for a tow so so embarrassing but <laughs> lesson learned thanks for watching hopefully you guys had a great opener and i'll see you guys on the water bye